The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. Have you heard the news about Kraft's new cheddar cheese? It's called K-Brand Natural. K-Brand will delight you folks who love a superb quality cheddar cheese. Delicious, mellow. Yes, K-Brand is really something to get excited about. Listen for more about K-Brand cheese later. Well, what's with the great Gildersleeve? There's usually a woman in his life, and this time it's the attractive widow who's recently moved to Summerfield, Doris Dalrymple. At the moment, the great man is over at her house, popping the question. Will you, Mrs. Dalrymple? Please. Well, all righty. (laughs) You've made me the happiest man in the world. Yes, I'll accept, Mr. Gildersleeve. A hayride sounds like loads of fun. Oh, it will be. All the jolly boys and their wives and their sweethearts are going. I can hardly wait until next week. Oh, I've never been on one before, Mr. Gildersleeve. What do you do on a hayride? Well, we rent a big wagon from the livery stable, right out to the woods. It's beautiful out there this time of the year. Then we build a campfire, roast weenies, and sing. Oh, is that all? Well, there's the ride home at night, under the harvest moon. Uh, Won't it be a little chilly? Chilly? Well, if you get cold, you can put my overcoat around you. Of course, I'll be in it, too. (laughs) Isn't that cute? And so all week long, our water commissioner's cup has been filled to overflowing. (laughs) She. The days have slowly passed, and now at last it's the evening before the happy event. We find our pudgy Lothario returning home from the office. Shine on, shine on, harvest moon. Up in the sky. Well, hello, everybody. The water man cometh. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mr. Ford. Hello, my dear. Marjorie, you're getting more beautiful every day. Why, thank you, Unky. That's all right. No charge. Oh, hello, Miss Gilsey. Hello, Bertie. How's the queen in the kitchen? Miss Gilsey. What's the matter, Bertie? Well, you ain't gonna like this. What? You ain't gonna like it. Well, tell me, Bertie. What is it? I'll tell you, but you ain't gonna like it. <laughs> Bertie, what is it? Are you hungry, Miss Gilsey? Oh, yes, indeed, Bertie. And I'm ready for one of your delicious dinners. Uh-oh. That's what I wanted to tell you. I've been so busy, I didn't get around to starting supper yet. It won't be ready for nearly an hour. Well, that's all right. There's no hurry. Take your time, Bertie. Huh? That's the first time I ever heard you say that, Mr. Gilsey. You're usually pretty calorie conscious. Yeah, well, any time you're ready, Bertie. Okay, Mr. Gilsey. First time I ever heard you say that. My, you're in a good mood tonight, Unky. Oh, I don't know. I hadn't noticed it. It uh, wouldn't have anything to do with that hayride tomorrow, now, would it? Hayride? Say, that is tomorrow, isn't it? As if you didn't know. How are you and Mrs. Dalrymple getting along? You said I was taking Mrs. Dalrymple. You got her name scribbled all over the telephone pad. Oh. And somebody carved a heart on our tree with her initials in it. It wasn't Leroy. (laughs) (laughs) Aren't you ever going to grow up? Grow up? Why should I? It's more fun this way. (laughs) What's that? Oh, Leroy. I better go back and look into this. Yeah, I know, Bertie. They're out there in the backyard. That's where I'm headed for. I'm not going to get you, little squirt. Leroy. Oh, come on. He took my Adam's gun. You'll make him give it to me. Give it back to him, Leroy. Go on now. Okay, here you are, you little crybaby. Now, Leroy, you mustn't pick on Craig. He's just a little boy. Yeah, a little boy. There's no reason why you two fellas... Craig, 
Be careful where you point that gun. I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> Craig, point that thing the other way now. This is an atom gun, and it'll blow you to pieces. <laughs> Craig? I'm going to blow you to pieces. Put that gun down, you little... <laughs> Well, nothing can make me mad today. Go on, Craigie, shoot me. I won't, and you can't make me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Go on now, play, children. I don't want to play with him, and he can't come in my clubhouse either. Clubhouse? You mean that horrible-looking packing box over there? Yeah, that's my clubhouse, and Craig can't come in there either. I can too. You cannot. I can too. Excuse me, telephone. Telephone. All right, Bertie. You cannot. I can too. Now, boys, I've got a great little idea. Leroy, you let Craig in your clubhouse, and Craig will let you play with his atom gun. Won't you, Craigie? I don't know. That's the spirit. Now go ahead and play like two healthy American boys. Everything under control out there, Mr. Gilsley? Uh, yes, indeed, Bertie. You just have to know how to handle children. Mm -hmm. Telephone's waiting, Mr. Gilsley. Uh, yes, I know. Hello? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, Mrs. Dalrymple. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I called about the hayride. Well, nice of you to call. Everything's all set. See you tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm awfully sorry, but I'm afraid I won't be able to go. Huh? It's my dog, Duke. He's got the sniffles. But, Mrs. Dalrymple... And he's running a temperature. I just couldn't leave him alone tomorrow. But... I hope it's all righty with you. But... I knew you'd understand, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Goodbye now. But... <laughs> <laughs> Huh? What are you locked in your room for? Come on, dinner's ready. I don't want any dinner. Well, what's the matter with you? Nothing, my dear. You just run along. Don't worry about your old uncle. He'll be all right. Come on, Uncle. We're all hungry. Don't wait for me. You just go right ahead. Fill your little stomach. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Doris Dalrymple. Why did you do this to me? <laughs> Why are you such a scatterbrain? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Doris. I didn't mean it. You're lovely. Beautiful. What if you are a little scatterbrained? What the heck? But we could have had such a good time. Riding home in the moonlight. Snuggling up close. Like I did last year with Eve Goodwin. <laughs> Well, it's too late. There's nothing I could... Eve. Wonder if I could... No. Well, she wouldn't have to know. She's second choice. <laughs> Good old Eve. <laughs> Morton. Hello, Eve. This is a surprise seeing you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just happened to be passing your house. Saw your light on. Uh-huh. Well, I'm glad you dropped by. Come in. All right. <laughs> Please sit down. Thanks. Can only stay a minute, though. Uh, uh, uh. How have you been, Eve? Fine, thank you. How about you? Oh, I've been fine. Fine. Mm-hmm. Well, Doc Morton, I haven't seen much of you lately. Where have you been keeping yourself? Keeping, um, uh, well, uh, how have you been, Eve? <laughs> you uh, just asked me that, Doc Morton. Oh, I did? Mm. <laughs> By the way, Eve, what day is tomorrow? Why, it's Saturday, Doc Morton. It is? Well, well. Why? That's the day of the big hayride. Yes, I know. Can you imagine that? I almost forgot about it. Oh. Well, how are the children? Steve, Doc, I've I... got a great idea. Just thought of it. What's that? How about you and me going on the hayride together? What? Isn't that a great idea? Just thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about it, Eve? Well, I, I rather thought you'd be taking Mrs. Dalrymple. Mrs. Dalrymple? Who's she? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, 
Well, George Morton, I've been hearing about you, too. Why, I hardly know, Doris. Uh, Mrs. Dalrymple. Oh, really? Sure. That's the trouble with this town. You speak to a lady on the street, pet her dog a few times, and, well, you know, rumors. Of course. After all, I have to be friendly to her, Eve. She's a good customer of the water department. Drinks a lot of water. <laughs> so does her dog. <coughs> uh, I, uh, I see. Anyhow, I'd rather take you, Eve, any day of the week. Yes, sir. <laughs> Who wants to take Mrs. Dalrymple? That's scatterbrain. How about it, Eve? Rock Morton, we haven't seen much of each other for a long time. Well, that's all righty. I mean, that's all right. <laughs> After all, there's nothing like a hayride for getting acquainted again. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be nice. Sure it will, Eve. Riding home under the harvest moon. Uh, and Eve. Yes? If it gets chilly, you can put my overcoat around you. Of course... I'll be in it, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jack Martin. Shine on, shine on, harvest moon up in the sky. Oh, hello, Bertie. You still working? Just finishing up, Mr. Gilsey. Have a nice evening. Oh, very nice. I was over at Miss Goodwin's. Oh, the judge called. Hooker? What did he want? Said he was just checking up to make sure everybody's bringing their share of the food for the hayride. Why doesn't he mind his own business? We never should have made him chairman. Well, I got your basket already. Wieners and mustard and sweet pickles. Yeah? Want me to get that? Yeah, I'll get it, Bertie. Probably the judge. Old busybody. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, Mrs. Dalrymple. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I have some wonderful news. Huh? <laughs> well, uh, what's that? Duke is all well. Duke? My dog. So I can go on a hayride with you after all. Oh, isn't that peachy? Uh... It was all a mistake. He didn't really have a temperature at all. He'd just been sleeping under the stove. Oh? <laughs> Are you sure? Maybe you'd better stay home, keep an eye on him. I wouldn't take any chances. Oh, no, no. He's friskier than ever. You should see him. He just jumped over the dining room table. <laughs> but, Mrs. Dalrymple, he might have a relapse. <laughs> uh, you're worrying about Duke. Isn't that cute? Well, see you tomorrow. What? Goodbye now. Mrs. Dalrymple. Duke. Man's best friend. <laughs> now what am I going to do? I can't take her and Eve, too. <laughs> How do I get into these con... Who's that? Oh, Hooker, why doesn't he stay out of my life? The old snoop. Why doesn't... Say, he used to be kind of sweet on Eve. I wonder if... <laughs> You're sly, Gildersleeve. Hello, Gildy. Hello, Horace, old friend. Hope you don't mind my dropping in this late, Gildy. I'm just making sure everything is in readiness for tomorrow. That's my job, you know. Perfectly all right, Horace. Don't know what the jolly boys would do without you. Well, thank you. Not at all, old friend. We're lucky to have a man like you. You're one in a million. Gildy. Huh? You're after something. Why, Judge, what do you mean? You're transparent as glass. Well, <laughs> I did have a little favor to ask, old pal. Never mind the applesauce. Get to the point. Judge, <laughs> I'm in awful trouble. I've got a date with Mrs. Dalrymple for the hayride tomorrow. That doesn't sound so awful to me. And I've got a date with Eve Goodwin, too. Sort of being a hog, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I can't take them both, Judge. I was wondering if you could take one of them for me. Eve Goodwin. Well? Please, Horace. I'll give you anything you want. You can have my hunting knife. Well? And I'll throw in a couple of bottles of Kalak water. <laughs> well, I might consider it. Judge, you're a true jolly boy. I'll never forget you for this. It's all right, Gildy. I'm sure Miss Goodwin would rather go with me anyhow. What? Being a school principal, she naturally enjoys intelligent conversation. What do you mean? Well, you're not exactly the intellectual type yet. Eh? No, look here, Hooker. Besides that, you're fat. Oh, and no woman loves a fat man. Why, you old bag of bones? 
Why don't you admit it, Gelde? Miss Goodwin prefers me because I'm distinguished, witty, much better looking than you are. You old goat, Eve would rather go out with me any day of the week. I doubt that. Well, I know it. Handsome. I've seen scarecrows better looking than you. <laughs> so you think Miss Goodwin would prefer to go out with you? You bet I do. All right, Gildy, in that case, you take her on the hay rod. Huh? Good night, Gildy. George Morris, come back. I didn't mean it, old friend. All right, Gildy, you take both of them. Hope you had a good time tomorrow. Big miss. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be back with the great Gildersleeve in just a minute. Every once in a while, something comes along that's really news. Well, here's ours. Kraft's master cheesemakers now give you a natural cheese made from pasteurized milk. It's called K-Brand Natural. That's K-A-Y, K-Brand Natural. Here's cheddar cheese with a delicious mellow flavor, a tender melt-in-your-mouth texture. Here's cheddar made from milk that's been pasteurized as carefully as the milk your children drink. Say, that sounds pretty special. It is. And K-Brand is aged a special way, too. Every big 10-pound bar goes to the curing room, sealed in its own transparent wrapper. And it's still in that same sparkling clean wrapper when your dealer gets it. You mean there's no cheesecloth around it? That's exactly what I mean. And that's why all of K-Brand cheese is usable. There's no rind. Tomorrow when you shop, look for the transparent wrapped bar marked K-Brand Natural. K brand natural down the top and sides. Have your dealer cut a portion for you, but get enough, for K brand is mighty good as a snack with crackers and sandwiches on your cheese tray. And green apple pie, fresh from the oven, topped with a thick slice of mellow, full-bodied K brand cheddar. Folks, that's happy eating. Look for, ask for, K brand natural tomorrow. Well, the great Gildersleeve has spent a sleepless night perched on the horns of a dilemma. Two women mean trouble, double trouble. It's morning now, and the great man has finally come to a decision. I'll call her. That's what I'll do. I'll just say, Eve, I'm sorry, but I can't take you on the hayride. I'm going to change the plans. I'll be firm about it. Hello? Hello. Eve? This is Throckmorton. Oh, hello, Throckmorton. Eve? Yes. Eve? <laughs> yes, what is it, Throckmorton? Eve, I'll see you this afternoon at 2 o'clock. <laughs> well, hello, Mr. Healy, see Hello, PV. What can I do for... My, something wrong? Huh? I've never seen you look so peaked. PV, I've got troubles. Well, I wouldn't worry, Mr. Gillespie. You'll forget all about your troubles on the hayride this afternoon. <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. Gillespie? Uh, nothing, PV. Yes, there's nothing like a hayride to relax a person. Riding along, clippity-clop, merry voices lifted in song... There is a tavern in the town, in the town. Please, please, Peavy. I've got a splitting headache. Oh, sorry. I guess my voice is a little powerful. <laughs> Peavy, did you ever have a date with two women? I beg your pardon? I mean, did you ever take out two women at the same time? Oh, yes, when I was a young man. You did? Oh, yeah. When I went to the picture show, I often took my mother and sister. <laughs> No, no, Peavy. I mean with two women you liked. Well, I liked my mother and sister. <laughs> I had an older brother I wasn't so fond of. Ye gods, Peavy, didn't you ever take out two women you felt romantic about? Oh, no, I wouldn't do that. I, I never believed in living dangerously. But you weren't thinking of doing that, were you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Who, me? Of course not. I wouldn't be crazy enough to get mixed up with two women at the same time. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I was just asking, Peavy, in case it ever happened, what would you do? Well, I, uh, 
I wouldn't get into it in the first place. But it, but in case you did, Peavy, what would you do? Well, I uh, I wouldn't get into it in the first place. But it, but in case you did, Peavy, what would you do? Well, I'd get out of it. You would, eh? How? Uh, there's a friend of yours across the street. Huh? Who? Why, don't you recognize her? It's Miss Goodwin. What's she doing? Well, right now, she seems to be coming over here. Look! She must have found out. So long, Peavy. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, why are you going out the back way? Oh, habit of mine. Goodbye. <laughs> Floyd, let me get in that barber chair. Quick. Sure. And what do you have? Throw a towel over my face. What? Don't just stand there. Throw a towel over my face. Okay. <laughs> what? Sorry. Hey, what's up, Commission? <laughs> Who are you hiding from? The law after you? <laughs> hey, you ain't been dipping into the till up at the water department. You're <laughs> <laughs> kidding. Well, that towel over your face ain't much of a disguise. Anybody looking in here would know you. There's only one stomach like that in town. <laughs> Keep those remarks to yourself. And look who's talking. <laughs> and here's your towel, Floyd. What are you trying to do, suffocate me? Well, as long as you're in the chair, Commish, how about a shave? I don't need a shave. Floyd, kind of stand between me and the window, will you? Yeah, okay. Well, look, if you don't want anything, I'd kind of like to close up shop. Me and the missus have to get ready for the hayride this afternoon. Oh. This is one hayride I'm not going to miss. Huh? Yes, sir. I'm going to get there early and see the fireworks. <laughs> what are you talking about? Wait till those two dames find out you're taking both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Hooker's been in here, I see. See, I don't blame you for hiding from them. I'd hate to be in your shoes when they meet. Wow. Why? What do you think they'll do? Liable to tear that hay wagon apart. You know what they say. Female of the species is more deadly than the male. Well, not even Mrs. Dalrymple. They're quiet, refined ladies. Don't let them quiet dames fool you. <laughs> Every woman's a tigress underneath, and she'll fight to the death for her mate. That's the law of the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. Now, look, you take the bull moose. When two females in the herd have a pass for the same moose, they don't monkey around. They just stick their heads down and charge. Oh, for heaven's sake. That's the law of the jungle. Oh, I've had enough of your stories. I'm getting out of here. See you later, Commish. And may the best moose win. Uncle Mort, where have you been? Uh, downtown. Gee, the phone's been ringing all morning for you. The phone? It has? Who was it? Oh, lots of people. Eve Goodwin. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Dalrymple. She called three times. Mm -hmm. And, oh, yes, the judge called. Hooker. He said the hay wagon would be by for you at two o'clock sharp with your lady friends. Both of them. <laughs> what did he mean by that? What did he mean by that? Uh, nothing, Marjorie. Hunky, what's the matter? Are you in some kind of trouble? Well, I am, sort of. Is there anything I can do? No, my dear. Thank you very much. I'll work it out some way. Well, all right. I'm going over to Francie's. And you better get ready for that hayride. Why? What time is it? It's five minutes to two. Goodbye. Oh, my goodness. They'll be here pretty soon. Pull yourself together, Gildersleeve. What's the matter with you? Afraid of two little women? That's ridiculous. Why, they can't. I don't know, though. Law of the jungle. <laughs> wonder where I could hide. Under the bed? Well, then they'd find me there. Say, I know. That's it. They'll never find me back there. Don't see anybody around. Hope I can get in Leroy's clubhouse. It's not a very big packing box. This must be the entrance where it's dug out here. That darn kid could have made that hole a little bigger. I'm no gopher. Well, here goes. Hope I can squeeze through. I'm almost in. Hi, Uncle. <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> what are you coming in here for? Yeah, well, I just thought I'd come in and see your little clubhouse. You can't come in here. Oh, oh, hello, Craig. 
You in here, too? You can't come in here. <laughs> Would you mind coming back later on? Our club's having a secret meeting. Yeah, secret meeting. Oh, well, uh, maybe I could join your club. How about that, Leroy? If you'll just give me a hand here and pull me in. Uh, well, I don't know. We'd have to vote on it. Vote on it? Well, I can't lie here like this, half in and half out. <laughs> You'd uh, have to pay dues, Unc. Quarter a month. I'll pay it. Of course, for grown-ups, it ought to be a little more. Maybe uh, 50 cents? Well, all right, Leroy. Don't overdo it. I agree. Can I come in now? Well, we'll have to vote first. Hurry up and vote. I can't breathe. Okay. Hello, member. Craig. Yeah? Hello, member. A candidate is waiting at our door. <laughs> candidate. He desires admittance to our club. Make it snappy, Leroy. Fellow member, what will your decision be? Will it be yay or will it be nay? He can't come in here. <laughs> Fellow member, you will please answer correctly. You must say yay or nay. Hey, God, Leroy. Sorry, Unc, those are the rules. Fellow member, will it be yay or nay? He can't come in here. Leroy, when I get my hands on you. <laughs> Who's that? Hooker. What are you doing down that hole, Gildy? <laughs> this isn't Groundhog Day. <laughs> uh, yeah. You seem to be stuck. I've been holding your legs here. I'll give you a chance. Take it easy, Judge. You're pulling my shoes off. Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Mrs. Dalrymple. Uh, were you down in that tiny little hole? Isn't that cute? <laughs> Hello, Throckmorton. <laughs> Come on, Throckmorton. Mrs. Dalrymple and I have been waiting for you. You and Mrs. Dalrymple? But I thought, aren't you two... Angry? No. Miss Goodwin and I have been getting acquainted. I think she's just peachy. <laughs> yes. Well, we three will have a wonderful time on the hayride. Come on, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Guess I'll never understand moose. I mean, women. <laughs> when folks drop in for a game of cards, top off the evening with sandwiches of Kraft's delicious new cheese, K-Brand Natural. K-Brand is a natural cheddar cheese with uniform fine flavor and texture and made from pasteurized milk. Yes, a natural cheddar made from milk that's been pasteurized as carefully as the milk your children drink. K-Brand has no rind because it cures in its own wrapper. Use Mellow Good K-Brand on your cheese tray with pie in sandwiches as a snack. Tomorrow, look for the big 10-pound bar at your dealers. Have him cut as much as you wish, but be sure you see the words K-Brand Natural down the top and sides. It's the new natural cheddar cheese made from pasteurized milk. Uh, Mrs. Dalrymple, uh, Doris. Yes? Yeah. Getting kind of chilly. Would you like to put my overcoat around you? It's big enough for two. Uh, all right. <laughs> Oh, Throckmorton. Uh, yes, Eve? I'm getting a little chilly. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. Huh? Say, I've got an idea, Miss Goodwin. You and I can sit together and put Mr. Gildersleeve's overcoat around us. What? You don't mind, do you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, no, I don't mind. <laughs> All right, everybody, all together now. Shine on, shine on, my best moon up in the sky. Shut up. Good night, This is John Wall saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Ladies, here's a speedy main dish that will help you stretch that food budget. It's Kraft Dinner. One package of Kraft Dinner contains enough quick-cooking macaroni and Kraft grated to make a dish of macaroni and cheese that will serve four people. It takes only seven minutes cooking time to prepare Kraft Dinner, and every bite is rich with golden cheddar cheese goodness. So get a couple packages from your food store tomorrow. Look for the yellow and blue package marked Kraft Dinner. The family will like it, for it's a Kraft quality product. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.